three number winners worth $50 each, that's 900 bucks. So I got $1,100 invested and I've got a $1,900 return. Hello, millionaire. In today's video, we're looking at the fantastic story of how a regular math teacher who found a way to beat the lottery, not just one time, but dozens of times, and became incredibly wealthy in the process while he helped his loved ones do the exact same thing. Buckle up, because this story is exciting. First, let me ask you a question. Did you know that about half of adult Americans play the state lottery? Also, did you know that the chances of winning the lottery are so low that you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning while riding a Ferris wheel in the middle of a terrorist attack? I know I might sound ridiculous at this point, but it is true. Despite the slim chances of winning, people still play the lottery. But why is that? The short answer is the American dream. The American dream means a lot of different things to different people, but at the core of it is financial riches. People don't want to keep stressing about money. They want their own house, to travel around the world, and most of all, they want to retire early and wealthy. So, most of them try the lottery. They put their hopes on luck and chance, hoping that something clicks and they win big. Now, what if I told you that someone decided to play the lottery in an entirely different way some years ago? This person wasn't going to leave it up to chance, so he discovered an intelligent way to play the lottery and increase his chances of winning. This mathematician found a loophole in the system that even his other mathematical colleagues hadn't figured out. Here is the fascinating story of Jerry Shelby, the math teacher who found a mathematical way to beat the lottery. For Jerry Shelby, winning the lottery was not a dream that he had deliberately fostered. He and his wife Marge lived in a tiny town in Michigan called Evett that had a population of 900 people. They married there, had six kids, and operated a convenience store. Eventually, when Jerry was 62 and Marge was 63, they decided to sell their store and relax in their home, watching TV and enjoying their lives of quiet and content retirement. Before that time, they had been working day in and day out at their store for 17 years. This retirement, no matter how unglamorous it was, was well deserved. Things would take an exciting turn when in 2003, an unusual lottery game, Windfall, was released. Jerry caught an ad for the lottery game while watching TV, and his mathematical brain immediately got into gear. It did not take you weeks to suss this out. No, no, not at all. Three, three minutes. Three minutes, and you've uh, found the loophole in the three, state lottery. Three minutes. I found, a, I found a special feature. The rules of the game were pretty straightforward. First, a player had to pick six numbers between 1 and 49. If they guessed 2, 3, 4, or 5 numbers, then they would get a prize in increasing amounts. If they guessed six, then they would win the $2 million prize. Nothing different so far, right? Well, keep watching. Jerry had always been a natural at math, all his life, and even had a master's in the discipline. He realized in a couple of minutes that there was an exploitable hole in the lottery's logic. One significant error that the state lottery had made was that they listed the odds of winning that were associated with each combination of numbers. Lottery shows like Mega Millions have the prize money go up when no one wins the jackpot. However, windfall was different because the exact opposite was the case. If I played $1,100, mathematically I'd have one four number winner. That's a thousand bucks. I divided 1100 by six instead of 57 because I did a mental quick dirty and I come up with 18. So I knew I'd have either 18 or 19 three number winners and that's 50 bucks each. At 18, I got $1,000 for a four number winner and I got 18 three number winners worth $50 each, that's 900 bucks. So I got $1,100 invested and I've got a $1,900 return. The jackpot would roll down when no one won and people with fewer correct numbers would win. Of course, it was more of a compensation win and nowhere near the grand prize. But at least those that invested and got fewer numbers got some value on their investment. Jerry studied those winning odds and the timing of the roll downs. He realized that, statistically, a single $1 lottery ticket was worth more than $1 in those final weeks. Pretty easy, right? Well, it depends. Keep watching. While this didn't mean anything to the average observer, and most people didn't see anything special about the whole situation, Jerry could see the millions that could be made. At first, he thought other math-savvy people would have already gotten in on the loophole. However, that didn't stop him from getting to work. When the first roll down was announced, Jerry went out and bought $3,600 worth of tickets. Guess what? He got almost double what he invested, a sweet sum of $6,300. 
His calculations were correct and gradually paying off. After this, he decided to purchase another 8,000 worth of tickets, and he got double the amount once again. After experimenting twice, he informed his wife that he had cracked the lottery and had been putting thousands of dollars from their retirement savings into it. Marge was initially skeptical about this idea. Her husband thought about using their entire savings on the lottery. It was insane, but after a few days of urging and explanations, Marge agreed. He bought $3,600 in windfall tickets and won $6,300. Then he bet $8,000 and nearly doubled it. At this point, Jerry was quite puzzled that no one had caught onto the trend. Why had no one else discovered the loop? This thought would be on his mind as he kept investing more and more money until he could make a small fortune. After this, he started a company called the GS Investment Strategies. In one of his earliest and most significant bets, Jerry put in 515,000 and got a return of 853,000. After this, he sold shares in the company to friends and family and started giving them massive returns on their investments. These were the people that trusted him enough to put down money into the system he had created. Soon, the town was swimming in some Hollywood plotline-like fortune. One of Jerry's friends was able to put three of his kids through school and one through law school. In 2005, just two years after the game was released, there were 25 members in Jerry's lottery club and funny enough, all of them were winners. The members were as diverse as they came there was a factory manager, a bank manager, and even a police officer. Although this was an incredibly fantastic run, we know nothing lasts forever, right? Here's where everything started to shift. Unsurprisingly, the state closed down Windfall, blaming it on a lack of sales. Later, one of the members of his lottery club informed him of a similar game in Massachusetts. When Jerry checked it up, he realized that it was true, and it only took him 10 minutes to figure out a solution for the game that would give them a guaranteed win. So what did Jerry and his Jolly Lottery Heist members do? Well, they began a six-year process of throwing in cash and yielding. Jerry and his wife would drive for hours to Massachusetts, a 900-mile journey whenever there was a rolldown. They'd walk around and drive while buying hundreds of thousands of tickets. It took a lot of effort and became like a profession. Sometimes they'd work 10 hours a day but still wouldn't get all the tickets they wanted. They saved millions of losing tickets just in case anyone started an investigation on their operation. It is important to note at this point that what they were doing wasn't illegal. They were playing a game, and for any authority to understand that, they had to have proof. Unfortunately, after a while, a few people started getting interested in the couple. Boston Globe started sniffing on their trail. They had received an anonymous tip that someone had been purchasing fortunate winning tickets at incredibly high volumes in Massachusetts. Now, this is where things got a little more interesting. An investigator from the Boston Globe discovered that there were actually two groups of people finding their way around the Massachusetts lottery system. The Shelby couple and, wait for it, MIT. Yes, some students at MIT had figured out what Jerry did and had invested heavily into the scheme. They had been able to gather enough money to bet millions over the span of seven years, and in the end, they had amassed $3.5 million in profits. Of course, when the story got out, the game was shut down effectively and an investigation began almost immediately. The state inspector general and his team searched for a scam, any sort of corruption that would nail the heisting lottery team, but they found none. The inspector would eventually admit defeat and marvel at the genius of an old retiree who can pull himself along with family and friends to wealth. Jerry Shelby would marvel at the fact that no one figured out the loophole throughout its nine-year run, except, of course, the students from MIT. Jerry Shelby's company would make $29 million over the span of nine years and has since given most of the money to his kids and grandkids. He also renovated his house to his dream taste, and he still hangs out with his friends from the heisting days. Ever since the fortunate incident, Jerry has gone from obscurity to extraordinary wealth to media runs to selling his story to Hollywood. His story is proof that there are many paths to the American dream. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.